Sure. Hello, and welcome to the first uh, session of the of the day. And that's a uh, Foreman webhooks. Uh, this is a, a character from the Blizzard's game Overwatch, by the way. Um, but we'll be talking uh, about uh, Foreman hooks and Foreman webhooks. This is the new plugin. It was um, actually created by Timo and Camille from Ironian and DM. And there are patches from me, Oleg, and Ron and several others uh, probably uh, are or will be working on this plugin. But today, I'd like to talk about uh, why we heard and why we're talking about uh, hooks and web hooks. So according to our, our survey, I asked Melanie yesterday <clears throat> to find out this number. Every third, uh, approximately every third community user uses form and hooks, which was surprising, actually, uh, because you know it's, it's kind of a hacky, hacky plugin, very simple. Very powerful, but as you can see, it has some drawbacks we'll be talking about. So I just want to you know, present to you why we're here and talking about webhooks. So a little bit of history. Then why we are building webhooks in a way that uh, I will show you later today. And so some motivation. And then I'll be showing a, a live demo, of course. Uh, integration with Foreman and Ansible Tower. And then I would like to uh, start a discussion and then bring it over maybe to the breakout sessions or maybe a, a follow-up uh, discourse thread about you know what's you know how we should continue developing webhooks because this is early development plugin, um, but we are targeting let's say 2.4, 2.5 ish uh, final you know release. Also maybe 2.3 you know very early, like uh, test it yourself uh, if we get to a packaging. Hopefully we'll do that. So Foreman Hooks is um, a nice little plugin. If you go ahead to our GitHub, uh, deforman.org, sorry, deforman, Foreman Web Hooks, uh, sorry, so Foreman Hooks, I'll be you know, messing up this uh, quite a bit. Uh, it's a, a tiny plugin that allows you to essentially create a directory within the Foreman uh, directory slash config slash hooks. And if you create a subdirectory, which is a name of a model, if you don't know what the model is, well, it's a it's a bit shame. But you know, if you're a user, you might not know what model is. So we're, the README is trying to explain this. It's basically a you know a class that is you know, basically a database table, and then you create a, a, a subdirectory which is named after Rails event. Again, you need to know what Rails actually is. That's Ruby on Rails, by the way, and uh, you know callback is a you know something that that it's a mechanism in active record by the way active record is an api in ruby on rails you, you know where, where i'm getting uh, with this you know you need to you know learn a lot of stuff about ruby on rails you know active record and internals of uh, foreman and then if you create a executable file so as long as this is Linux executable file, it's fine. It can be, you know, shell script, Python script, whatever. Maybe a binary written in C doesn't matter. Then every time this event uh, or callback occurs, you know, your script is called. The script is actually called within the process. So you know, during the request, you know, during the SQL transaction. So if your script is slow, then your request will be slow. And if your script actually will fail, in some cases that can actually roll back the transaction. So it's not you know the best uh, approach. However, it works. You can actually list a list list of hookable objects, or you know you need to pay attention to host, which is the most likely the object you'll be hooking or call callbacking, because it's uh, actually actually STI that stands. That's an, an, another acronym you need to you know know about. Uh, basically, we have uh, several types of hosts. This one is host managed, which is the most likely one to to be picked for integration. So these are you know model callbacks. Then we also have orchestration events. So. You know, within Foreman, we have something called orchestration, which is again something that is called from from our active record. So we have uh, several, you know, um, hooks as well for that. And there's a post and around type of callbacks. And finally, there are a couple of what we call Rails events. These are, I'd say, business logic events. Uh, you know, specifically after build and brief or provision gets triggered when a host is installed and stuff stuff like that. And then your script needs to be aware that it's basically executed within the on the server within the Foreman user environment. 
also if you're running as Linux, it has, you know, you need to be pay, pay attention to the SLinux. You know, there's not much logging. You know, if, if something breaks, you need to do a print into temp file statements, kind of, if you want to dig something up. And finally, uh, and when you do that, by the way, and if you do slash TMP, you will likely end up in the systemd private uh, environment. So you won't be finding the file in the TMP. This is like another nice level of, you know, confusion. That's very nice. I really hit this several times already. When I was when I was trying to help our customer, and then finally the you know the script uh, receives a payload, which is the object, the subject of event, as a, as I think it's a JSON, which uh, on the standard input. So you need to you know do something standard input parsing. If you're doing a shell script, you probably need to do call some kind of external JSON, uh, JSON parser, and, and and deal with that. So uh, and. And also, you know, debugging of this is a little bit uh, dif difficult. And also, finally, the payload is actually rendered through our Rebel uh, um, Rebel uh, stack. If you don't know what Rebel is, it's a it's a mechanism we use to render API JSON, you know, JSON output uh, from our internal, you know, uh, structures. So there's a lot to understand, as you can see, if you want to do a web hook, sorry hook. And I know, you know, there are several pain points, uh, for example, debugging, because, uh, you know, the original author made a great job. And I mean, this it, it, it's a nice hack, uh, but in his words, uh, this shouldn't be probably shipped with satellite, with, with downstream products, because it was kind of a, you know, hacky solution to a, a particular problem. But we did, you know, ship it and a lot of users and even upstream started using it, of course. It's a shame that it's, I know, seven years into this and we're finally, you know, uh, doing something. Well, I'm, I'm really uh, grateful that we're doing that. Um, uh, so there's no user interface, by the way, it's just, just, it's just hacking, you know, just, you know, you, you need to dig in and, you know, write uh, some temp files and stuff and get uh, things moving. And then, it, it, you know, one of the drawbacks is also, as I've said, it blocks requests. So it's kind of a slow, it can, can break things. A lot of users are actually using Hammer within those um, requests. So actually your request, depending on the callback, is not yet, you know, saved and you're doing Hammer, things like that. So you need to deal with before and after, uh, things like that. So so it's not ideal. If I switch over to webhooks, uh, it's completely uh, complete opposite of uh, of hooks by design. So um, this is actually the idea is coming was brought uh, at ethics conference in Munich when I was uh, I think in in 2018. Uh, we had a nice round table during lunch, and it turned out that a lot of users there. I think we were like nine people there. I know, and almost everybody. When I asked, you know, how many of you are using uh, hooks, you know, right, you know. You know, said that yeah, that, that, that we are using that, and and uh, I, I heard some opinions that we are having like thirty hooks, and it's heavily we are heavily dependent on that. I was quite surprised, and we kind of discussed, you know, with Timo uh, from DM that we would like love to see cleaner implementation, and we started, um, you know, this idea of, you know, doing some some clean event system in in form and core. And, and allowing plugins to subscribe those because at the time I was thinking like maybe we should be you know sending those into Redis and and Timo was more about like maybe we should do a webhooks kind I like this approach like it what GitHub does and at that point you know our opinions diverged but that was fine I know I mean we designed this uh, in a way that it's you can write a, your own plugin if you want to send these to via email you can it's fairly easy uh, you know the whole thing. Uh, which is now in core, we call this for events of home and events. It's just Rails notifications, a you know API. It's just super simple, three lines, and you can subscribe to an event and you can do anything you want. So we wanted also to, and then then after Timo started working on this webhook with his friends uh, in at Ironin, and they actually created a plugin and contributed the form and core part, which is fairly small. And then I just ditched my idea of, you know, uh, web hook, uh, sorry, of, of Redis and start more uh, digging. And, and, and finally, we, we merged this 
or moved the Git repository to to Foreman, and uh, we now working full full throttle working on this um, as an alternative solution to hooks. So this from the day one it was clear we want we don't want to be exposing active record or any kind of internals to end users. Also, we didn't want to block requests. It should be fire and forget. You know, there, there's no a return. You know, you can't really check return or do do and you know any kind of dependent task on return. It's just uh, you know one way uh, messaging. We wanted to have a web user interface, and specifically, I was very interested in easy debugging because you know I will be probably the one that uh, Red Hat customers will come to when they have a problem. So just this was from the day one. You know, it, it, it had to be transparent as as soon as um, as much as possible. Um, instead of doing a rebel and ser serializing of objects, we we had a re really long discussion. You can hear, you know, you can read about it more on our discourse. But we ended up with uh, the idea of reusing our templating system, templating engine, to actually render the payload of uh, webhooks uh, via a template, which is great because then you can only publish what's needed. So, for example, if you're if you're doing a, a hook that creates a host in monitoring, you perhaps need just the host name, and that's all. So you just create a template that pushes out a host name, and if we mm, rename something you know, within our host template, it won't break your uh, you know script because you know nothing will be changing. You're just sending the host name in the in the template. So this is really nice uh, feature. So uh, so if you go to Foreman the door, sorry, Foreman, uh, sl uh, the Foreman slash Foreman webhooks. Uh, that's the plugin. You can install it uh, as of today. It, it should even work with 2.3 RC, which is coming out uh, quite, uh, quite, uh, you know, uh, uh, in a, in a week or something. Uh, so. Okay, <laughs> it's uh, uh, great. So this will work. Uh, the only drawback is we don't have a package yet. Uh, we were working on this in upcoming in the upcoming weeks. Uh, so um, let me show you how it works. If you enable the plugin, and it's basically one of these plugins that you just enable, and you don't need to uh, even configure anything. There will be new option administer webhook. We and by the way, this user interface is the regular Ruby on Rails generated, uh, but. Uh, but we're working on uh, on our uh, React uh, new interface. It will be completely, you know, well, complete. It will be different and uh, much nicer. And the idea behind webhook is, for if you ever work with uh, GitLab, GitHub webhooks, it's pretty much same. It, basically, the first there are actually three ways you can integrate Foreman now with webhooks. The first one and uh, the way is the most recommended way you basically build a web service on your own somewhere you deploy it on whatever you want container doesn't really matter and then you create a webhook uh, by yourself to call it and you this is very flexible solution so you give it a name let's say uh, create host uh, host in uh, monitoring target url can be whatever you want so my you know, my system whatever APIV monitoring. Oh, what did I do? I moved my window a little bit. Hopefully it, it is still presenting. You can use HTTP plain uh, authorization, authentication, sorry. HTTP method, of course, content type, and then uh, a template. Template uh, I will show you on, on another screen. It's basically a template that will be rendering the payload. Now, subscribe to is the most important one. This is the list of current uh, events you can subscribe to. There are, you know, um, three types of events. First one is uh, very similar to hooks models. This is these are handpicked, selected, uh, you know, um, models, which we marked as, you know, eventable or subscribe subscribable. Uh, that's that's not a world, but you know, you can you can actually subscribe to. This includes, you know, at this point, domain, host, host groups, and subnet and user. And we can extend this to just three lines of code. Um, second uh, second uh, type of objects are like business objects or sorry, business events or custom events. Basically, when in a code, we create some point that triggers the event. This is, for example, built, entered, and ex exited, or 
I think we have status change, the host status change, something like, like subscription is expired or something like that. And the third event, it's not listed here, are events which are generated by uh, Dyneflow and Active Jobs. Uh, so this will be very useful for Cattell. We are still working on that, but we have PRs up uh, at the moment uh, by Adam and me. And they, this will appear. Things like content view has been published and things like that. So let's say host created. And you can enable or disable, and then you can verify SSL uh, uh, certificate. And here, similarly to our our uh, CRs, you can create one or more concatenated uh, server certificates. This is a preliminary user interface. Here, you, you know, in the final version, we should have multiple entries. But for now, you can also arbitrary HTTP headers can be also um, added. This is just uh, you know um, a work in progress version. Uh, this is a, a JSON version, uh, and then that's it. You know, uh, you create um, you create a host, and you create and delete it when uh, host is deleted. Uh, usually, uh, you know, when in, when you be doing a host a destroyed action, you want to enter the host name in the URL itself because usually a REST API works like that. So here. You can basically use ERB. The, the, you know, I'm showing you some features which are in my local branch, so I'll be pushing that. Uh, you know, this week, you can do something like the subject of the event is called is um, exposed uh, in you know, the context is there's a class variable called object. So that's the in this case it's host. So I do something like name here. So you would do this for uh, the destroy action, right? Um, and that's that's it. You know, this way you can integrate with an external system. Um, or sorry, um, if you're if you're writing your own web service, you just you know you can design it in a way um, uh, you like. So it could be just a regular you know uh, web service or CGI script, whatever. Or if that's REST, of course, then deletion would require you to to pass in the the host name name. Um, so that's the first uh, option, right? Writing your own, uh, uh, you know, target uh, web service, and this the webhooks plugin was meant for that. Second option is um, that uh, you actually have a, a target system, backend system. In this case, this is Tower running on my Vert uh, instance VM, and you can actually call API directly. You know. If if the API, uh, you know, if if you can generate a payload, uh, you know, some reasonable way using our templating mechani mechanism, uh, and if the REST API is, you know, just a single call, you can do this. So here I have two examples for um, Tower. So adding to Tower is very simple. Just you know, um, here's the URL. I have an admin admin uh, instance, and it's a post JSON, and then I have a uh, uh, then I have a a template. I'll show you a template. The template, I mean, uh, and set a tower host in in inventory looks like this. So this is this is coming from the documentation of of Ansible tower. You give it a name, description, inventory ID actually. So in this in my template example, I'm actually pulling this out of uh, Ansible, you know, uh, host params, uh, and then you know you call it. There's one snag, and that's 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 something I would like to talk about maybe in the breakup session. Uh, when you create a new host in uh, in Ansible Tower, it will generate a, a new database ID. And uh, when you want to edit or delete the object, you actually need to, you know, the URL must contain the database ID, just like in any other REST service. That's the same. That's the same as we have uh, in Foreman. However, to do that, you need to actually do another call to actually find the object. So currently, you can't do this. Uh, so, you know. This actually, these are fake fake uh, hooks. The first one, creation will work, but the deletion won't work because um, we need to. And, and there are a couple of ways we would like to approach this. This uh, this is a you know the discussion, uh, maybe creating some kind of a XPath like you know a helper method that would you know do a request and then uh, extract the record ID from the response using like JSON path or XPath, something like that. But it's an extra call, and also uh, all the processing of webhooks is 
do, done using a backend service, using the active job. So in our case, that's a Dynflow running on the background. However, rendering of the templates, the payload itself and the URL is done during the request, during the, you know, uh, during the you know transaction so this could be also slow so this is an op this is open question if we want to um use that maybe this might be a little bit you know com complicated for users now there's a third option which is i like the most there's a plugin called shellhook smart proxy shellhook shellhooks uh, which i wrote um and um it's a super small uh plugin you just enable it and you just give it a directory by default varlib form and shell hooks and it goes and searches for all the executable files there and you can actually then call the shell hook using a standard post uh, post um, http call and you give it a slash shell hook is the base name slash uh, the uh, executable name you can't of course use any paths it must be uh, you know um, only a file name there there it's only alpha num like num, num, num characters and underscore by default for security reasons and then it, it executes this um on your smart proxy and the contract is very simple you know it executes it in a thread it never returns any uh return value so it's, you know it's always http 200 unless the, there was a problem with executing the command itself um and it also uh because the payload, which you render via, via run templates, it goes into standard input. However, in the format hooks, I learned that you know debugging this is a little bit painful. You know, maybe if you're using shell script, you know parsing JSON is not the conv most convenient way. So it also supports uh, arguments via HTTP headers, X shell hook, arc one, arc two, and and so on. So you can actually easily you know uh, easily uh, you know create those scripts and test them. And then you can easily uh, easily use them. So in my case, I created a. Uh, and this was pushed actually already into smart proxy shell hooks. In the examples subdirectory, there is Ansible Tower CLI. You know where where, where I'm heading. Uh, that, that's a super simple shell script that actually uh, consumes three arguments: create or delete is the first one, host name is the second one, and third one is inventory name. As you can see, the, it's as simple as calling Tower CLI. Of course, you need to have a Tower CLI command installed, which you can do by you know using pip uh, install Tower CLI command. It's very easy, and then configure it, of course, uh, against your tower. But then it's just host create command, and then deletion is a little bit more complex. You need to find out the record ID, and then you de do the host delete command. Now I, uh, I would like to show you. So I have this shell hook here, which calls, as you can see. And this is my smart proxy, this is my development environment, by the way. So HTTP, but you can do HTTPS as well. And yeah, it's the this is the shell hook name. And here in the in the again, this is you know work in progress uh, user interface, but I'm giving it three uh, arguments using HTTP headers. Of course, I can use ERB here. So this is the object name for the second one. And the same goes for you know the deletion is very similar. It's just I just uh, swap uh, the first argument to delete. So now if I go ahead and create a new host and um, uh, I give it uh, some context and I think I have a host group and and I will just quickly create a F F7 might be unused and submit. Um, now I created a, a new host informant. However, in Ansible, you should see there are no hosts here. This is Ansible running in my VM. And as you can see, the KT Benzi uh, host was created. Uh, now, uh, all the output of your scripts, uh, standard error and standard out standard outputs ap appears in your proxy log. And uh, also the session or request ID carries over to proxy, just like if you're calling any other you know, uh, smart proxy endpoint. So debugging should be much more easier if I delete the host, of course, it should uh, actually disappear. Um, and um, this is, you know, our, you know, response to those who would like to um, start, you know, using, uh, to those who have many hooks, you know, foreman hooks, 
shell scripts because these are shell, you know executables and would like to migrate to webhooks in the future so it should be pretty easy all your scripts should work as long as you either give them the right payload or you use this argument uh, arguments are more convenient but if you want you can of course create a new webhook template and I'm using for for the actually for the for my uh, shell hook. I'm, uh, I've created an empty payload, which you know renders nothing because uh, payload is actually not used by the script. Because again, in shell, you don't want to be you know um, parsing shell script, uh, start parsing JSON. That's a little bit inconvenient. So it's actually uh, not used. But if you want, you can easily create a new book template. And let's say uh, yeah, and give it and give it some content and then parse it in Python or whatever. So again, three options uh, for webhooks. First, and this is the most recommended one: you write your own uh, web service and you just call it. Uh, you render payload as you want. I recommend to minimize amount of information you give. You should not pass the whole object, you know, because the moment we change uh, something in there. Uh, you need to probably change your script, you know, send as minimal information as you can. For example, just the host name, uh, host name itself and maybe subnet and stuff like that domain. And second option is to actually integrate with uh, the backend system directly. As long as, you know, the URL, you know, you can construct the URL from, from uh, form and uh, database objects, things like host names, subnets names, domain names, you can use that as well. So you don't need to actually do any kind of man in the middle uh, service. And third option, if you or if you migrating, if you don't like any of the previous two, or you want to migrate from your uh, web um, previous uh, form and hooks, and you have many scripts, you can actually use this shell hook plugin which we don't ship uh, yet. You need to download it. It's very, very small, as you can imagine, and you can use that as well. Um, and um, that's pretty much all I have. Uh, so I'll go over the uh, chat and please interrupt me if you want to raise any question or uh, bring, uh, bring up any topic. We can do move on to the breakout session then and, uh, and get and talk about this uh, uh, there, I'll go bottom to top. It would has a good point that there's a JQ uh, JQ um, command, which is pretty good to parse JSON scripts. Yes, of course, we do have a few examples in the form and hook, of course. So if you prefer, uh, if you're if you want to uh, feed more data than one, two, three arguments, of course, these arguments are not good for like structured. Uh, if you need really to integrate something more difficult than you know json could be a good way jq can be uh can be an answer we also have some users using rubygem rubygem json i think uh, some of them are using ruby um uh, scripting so that's that's uh, also an option okay thank you very much Oldham. uh we have also three questions in the q a application so uh, let's take a look at them we still have 10 minutes uh before we would need to move to the big position uh, or room. So let's start with the first question with two votes. Could you also trigger a form and remove execution even from webhooks? Yes, sir. Can you repeat that? Could you? Yeah, I'm sorry. Could you also trigger a uh, remove execution even from webhooks? Interesting. So first, first off, could be I could turn this other way around. You know, can, can you hook to when when? to an event when SSH execution uh, is scheduled, that would be a nice uh, nice feature to have, of course. And uh, no, you can't really uh, trigger SSH execution. That's a interesting point. However, uh, you know, I think it's a good fit for webhook plugin itself because what we, in the initial design, we thought that it would be nice if any party could uh, easily write a plugin that would you know consume those events and it's super simple it's just three lines you can, so subscribe to those events you're interested in and then you have all the power of ruby ruby on rails so i've written myself a, a redis publisher which you know sends over those events to redis but i ditched that uh, idea there's another community user who is recently showed us a, a similar approach but that project was not using the new api so if 
if we want this feature, or if, you, if you want this feature, probably go ahead and write a plugin. I'm not sure if we should be making the books plugin more complex. I'd rather keep it simple. I, I hope this is easy to understand. You just you know click on create a book, you just give it a name, URL. You can use ERB here and there. You can associate a template or do empty payload template. And you know I, this is I think super simple. And the goal was to be complete opposite of uh, form and hooks. So that's, for me, it's qu quite complex. You need to read the readme three times until you actually get the gist of it. That was at least that that's my approach every time I, I need to fix a bug once a year. So uh, yeah, it's not possible at the moment. I would love to not to make this complex, but if we find this uh, useful, maybe we can implement that. So I, if I hear you correctly, uh, you would suggest rather product a remote execution plugin to consume the subscribable subscribable events because it's very simple to actually use that. Uh, I actually had one more thought. I think you can use this webhook functionality to call your form and API as well, right? You would do like a request to the localhost, but that feels like a, an ugly hack how you could trigger a remote execution job. So probably not something that we would recommend. Interesting idea. All right, there is a second question uh, with two votes. Yvonne asks, uh, are the SSL client certificates used to authenticate when using smart proxy webhooks? So I guess we are talking about request from format to the proxy, how we authenticate that. Yeah, very good one. Uh, that is on on, my, on our to do. Uh, we have tested. I have tested this for using HTTP and HTTPS against a third party system with certificates. Of course, that worked fine. However, when you you are reaching out to smart proxy, I'd expect you know maybe the we can deal this with this once we deal with the UI. You should probably have a drop down here, like if you want to connect to um, shellhook running on a, a smart proxy slash capsule, you just have a drop down, select your capsule, and then you don't even need to uh, fill those username, password, uh, in a verify SSL and uh, CAs. You you need to you know this could be hidden because you know obviously Foreman has a full access to all his it's smart proxies or, or capsules. So yeah, good point. We should work on that. That should be more use, even more user friendly. You know, we, we, we could easily bring down this down to when using shell hooks, of course, uh, like one, two, three, four, five, maybe five or four, uh, you know, items here. So yeah, good point. We should work on that. Awesome. Uh, next question is actually mine. Uh, so I see we have quite a lot of things already in subscribe to uh, drop down. How hard it is to add a new event like that, let's say from a plugin? Yeah, so uh, super, super simple. Uh, we have, um, so we have a documentation if uh, uh, in, in, uh, in Foreman, Foreman, is that the correct URL? I think, yeah, developer docs. So, let me just an answer something you you were not asking, and then you know, I'll answer the you. So if we do hook, is that a hook? No, name no, is that uh, here? Is that no, 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 here? Subscribe, subscribe, subscribers. So here, if you want to write up your own plugin, so this is basically a code that resides in the form and webhook itself. You don't not need to understand this, but if you want to write your own plugin that will whatever, maybe you you think like, uh, no, I'm, I don't like shell and I don't like even writing my own web service. I will write my own plugin. You can do that. It should it should be pretty easy plugin. I mean, just you just subscribe and in your app folder, you'll have some couple of methods that will do whatever you need. You can do that. Uh, but you were asking for um, for the uh, extensions, how to extend this. So we should add, you know, um, we have a, uh, so yeah, that's uh, of course in the code. And now I'm trying to search for, where was the search capability here? Um, I think it's called trigger a hook, I'm not sure. Mm, observer, yeah, observable uh, interface or uh, mixed in. Uh, observable model so i think you include observable model and then you uh, and that should be enough so basically it's a one line something like extend or include i'm not really good ruby developer <laughs> should i say but yeah something like that and it just works uh, and we have explicitly this uh, if i search probably 
uh, probably this we have this in the mentioned uh, models uh, oh yeah here for example host domain is observable uh, so basically one liner if we want and we didn't want to from the day one to allow users to hook to everything because we i think it's a good idea to have this under control so if you are watching this uh, in you know three years from now and you are missing a, a model you would like to hook just ask us on a, on a discourse give us give us a ticket or bugzilla and we'll you know very happy include a single line for you because we want this to be under our control. We don't want to overwhelm users with, you know, you know thousands and thousands of events. Uh, that's That was the idea. Okay, cool. Thank you. And we have two more questions from Brian. So the first one is, are there other security items planned, uh, I guess, for the authentication to the, to the target system? Uh, today, I see user and password. Uh, but he asks about some API tokens. Is there any plan for, for more of this? Abs absolutely. So uh, I did a tiny little research. I included three of, you know, I've selected three backend systems. There was a monitoring solution and a tower and something else. I don't remember exactly. There's a threat on this course, but uh, I've, I, I found that, uh, you know, HTTP plane plus uh, arbitrary headers should be enough for, you know, all the three actually so for example in tower you can use a admin and user using the like credentials using normal credentials login name and then you can generate a token and i think you passed in with i think it's http header i'm not sure or, or you can even use it as a password i'm not really sure about that one but i'm pretty sure it, it covers that uh, and you know, what we have today and of course yeah it's a it's a good point that uh, we should be working on that uh, we should be, you know, tracking this, uh, and there will be uh, additional work if we find that something is not um, uh, possible. However, again, Fabbox was primarily designed to because you know you can only do a single, a single request. So the moment you start, you know, thinking about maybe I need three requests, or even if you need two requests, we might or might not. Uh, we, I don't know, it's not decided yet to implement some kind of a, a special helper that would allow you at the rendering point, at the rendering, rendering stage to do an extra call. But um, I think that's all we can do. So then build your own web service. And then, of course, if you're building your own web service, you can do a CA certificate or, you know, token or whatever you, you know, you, you, know, you can build the service uh, you know, for webhooks itself. But yeah, good question. Uh, we should cover majority. Um, and if not, then we'll shoot. We'll, we will be adding a new field, perhaps. But uh, you know, arbitrary HTTP header should be enough. Okay. And the last question: We have the last five minutes before the next session, so just a short answer, please. But uh, the the question is: How security hardened is the smart proxy script hook? So, are there any like hardening mechanisms on the smart proxy shell plugin? Yeah. First of all, this shouldn't be you know this enabled by default. Of course, it is kind of a remote execution by default. However, uh, of course, um, I've written a readme, uh, pretty sure, but, you know, gives you some things you should avoid. Definitely, you know, don't do a evil in shell thing, things like, okay, I, I will write my script in a template, <laughs> render it, and then we, I will execute it on my capsule or smart box. That was a, it's a terrible idea, don't do that. So you should, you know, pass minimal arguments possible using the arguments or using the standard input. Of course, there will be a Linux uh, policy for this, um, for sure. So it will only allow you to execute scripts which are properly tagged here. You have, uh, of course, Unix permissions as well. You have a Unix user and group, so you can only execute these. Um, and uh, yeah, so the plans are, of course, similar security as form and hooks, by the way, is you are executing uh, uh, shells uh, uh, on your even on your set, ser, foreman or satellite server itself, which is even more dangerous. Here you can actually was I think I think if you will be using shell hooks, and I wouldn't be against that. I lo I love the fact that you can easily write um, write a sh short script. Then you can actually dedicate a, a a smart proxy only with the single feature shell hooks running inside a VM or inside a container or two VMs or whatever, uh, and within the Linux and you know. Uh, uh, environment so you can do a lot to make it uh, more secure but sure it all f everything falls uh, if you do an, a mistake and yeah I, i've done my best to 
to avoid any uh, any problems. And please do read the code base here. It's very short if you find uh, problems. It's still not released or not part of any release. So uh, you know, get back to me and we can fix this. Okay, thank you very much. I think we'll need to stop here. If you want to continue uh, chatting about Foreman by Books, I'm just sending to the chat uh, the link to the breakout room so you can ask more questions in there or discuss a bit more. Uh, I think we would also like to hear any kind of feedback if you're watching this video. So please uh, go to our discourse, uh, tell us what you think about that. And thanks a lot for your presentation. I'm going to stop recording now. Thank you.